Hey, welcome back to my permanently Filipino playlist where I basically talk about everything my husband and I are doing as we transition from the United States as retirees to the Philippines to become permanent residents. And before I talk about today's topic, I want to say I love having a Christmas tree starting in September. In the Philippines, it's the Burr months, so you're going to see Christmas decorations and you're going to hear Christmas music when you go into the stores. Um, I'm embracing as much Christmas joy as I possibly can, and I'm not going to just have two months of it. I will have four plus months of Christmas joy, and I'm here for it. I believe I get a better rate of return <laughs> when it comes to my Christmas decorations. So, um, it is what it is. <laughs> my friends in the United States think, they think I'm a little bit crazy, but I appreciate the fact that my husband doesn't, and he actually is enjoying the glow of our Christmas tree um, starting in September, which I'm glad he appreciates it the same way I do. I am getting used to having colored lights. I'm not used to having colored lights on my Christmas tree. This is the first year I've ever done it. Um, my husband has asked for colored lights forever, and I've always been a white light person, but I thought, I'll humor him, we'll see. And I actually like it. I actually like it. We'll just see if it happens next year or not. But for right now, we're enjoying our beautiful Christmas tree every evening. I'm turning it on for the benefit of this video though. Anyway, so today's topic is to talk about my efforts to become a dual citizen and if it's actually happening or not. So to cut to the chase, I will not be able to become a dual citizen in the Philippines. And I learned of that answer March 2021 when I first made an attempt um, contacting the Bureau of Immigration via email asking them to look over all of my documents and to give me feedback about becoming a dual citizen. And I'm stubborn, I'm determined, um, and through perseverance, I basically found out the same answer. <laughs> Nothing has changed. So this video is going to talk about me reaching my final attempt and just accepting the fact that I there's nothing more I can do okay so in previous videos I talked about everything that I had done all the way to my um, attempt of going to talking to somebody in person at the Bureau of Immigration Intramuros in November of 2023 I kind of mulled over what my next steps were when they basically said, no, we can't help you unless you get more information about your birth mother. So I did that. I posted video, a video about that. And um, I did talk about uh, pretty much of an emotional, mm, the emotional experience at PSA Cerbilis was maybe um, it was overwhelming let's put it that way it was overwhelming for me because it opened up maybe a floodgate of 50 million other things that I had I personally had to do to possibly um, get more information about my birth mother and I wasn't sure if I really had the fortitude to do that but um, this video is going to talk about what I did decide to do. So in February of 2024, I contacted a visa agency, specifically JRC. And this is not, um, not like I'm sponsored by them or, or um, getting any, like they haven't even asked me to do this is my personal experience with a visa agency. I chose this visa agency because um, 
listening to a bunch of testimonies from other people who had used JRC made me believe I could get the most thorough um, the most thorough answers and experience through them. And um, fast forward to right now, I would still say I am so glad that I did go to JRC for them to be able to help me throughout this entire process. So February 2024, I contacted them and my husband and I had a meeting. I will admit it was a really emotional meeting because <laughs> JRC was, um, JR was actually present at our meeting. Um, I remember walking up into the, their office, going towards their office in Manila. And my husband and I are um, walking down like the hallway and we see this guy opening the door. We're thinking it's for us and it took us a moment and we realized it was JR actually opening the door. So he was at my meeting. Um, it's making me just a little bit nervous because just thinking back and mainly about me sharing why it was important for me to be, why it was important for me to try to become a dual citizen. And it's something that I've only really talked to my husband about. So to be able to share that with JR and also with the other associate, uh, Rika, who initially helped us, um, I didn't realize how much emotion that I had with it, which it's coming back up again. So, um, it still feels fresh to me, um, even though I'm, I'm completely satisfied with everything that they had done to help me and to help me move forward in my process of becoming a permanent resident in the Philippines. So through watery eyes, I'm going to try to read a little bit of my timeline of what had happened after the meeting. Okay, so clearly after the meeting, I agreed that I would um, use their service uh, and that they would assist me in becoming a dual citizen. And my situation was complicated. There was a lot of steps that they had to go through and I figured having somebody represent me would have been a better way for me to move forward because I was just, and I still am learning Tagalog, and I feel like there were many things about the entire process that was overwhelming. And I had already made, what, three or four attempts on my own. How many, I can't even remember now. Uh, three, three personal attempts on my own. So this was going to be my fourth attempt using a visa agency. And, um, after making payment, signing the contract, um, the process started um, in March 2024. And so basically, I'm going to do some reading because it gets a little bit complicated and there's very specific things that um, Rika, my um, liaison officer, had done to assist mainly me. Um, to get my dual citizen. So in March, um, and she would give me updates. So basically what I'm doing is sharing the things that she told me she had done um, for me to become a dual citizen, everything that she'd done. I, I apologize ahead of time because maybe not ahead of time, you clearly already can see I'm stumbling over my words, partly because um, partly because it is still a little bit emotional for me to talk about it because um, I just go back into time thinking about uh, everything that had happened and feeling on edge most of the time of is this going to work or not? Is, 
will I be successful or not? And as I've already shared, it didn't, but um, it feels odd because this is the first time I've actually talked about the entire process um, in its entirety. So bear with me <laughs> as I'm trying to um, muddle through sharing this experience with you. So in March, basically, she went to, um, my liaison officer went to PSA, and she also went to Anjali City. Um, I remember when she said she emailed me before she uh, left for Anjalis, which since I've been in the Philippines, I have not gone to Anjalis City yet, but I do have plans to go. And I'm super curious what that's going to do to me once I actually um, get there. But I'll most likely post a video, um, videos of my experience when I get there and I'll talk about it, I'm sure. Anyway, so my liaison officer also submitted all of my letters and all of my requests on my behalf. Um, so that happened around in March. Um, so at PSA Surbilis, they requested um, a certificate, my birth mother certificate. And unfortunately, the result from that meeting was a certificate of no record. Um, when they went to, when she went to Anjali City, um, I'm sure she found out what I just recently found out. Um, that she really couldn't get any additional information in regards to my birth mother. Um, the main thing that she would really have access to in An Anjalis is um, going to the Barangay Hall and into the neighborhood to see if uh, going to the actual home of my birth mother to see if she's still there. Um, I have not talked to Rika about that visit. I don't think I was, I just accepted that she could not get information in Han Halis. Um, I don't think I was necessarily ready to uh, have that conversation in regards to it. I just trusted that whatever she said she did, she did. And the result just wasn't exactly um, in my favor, okay. Um, oh, and I guess I'll talk more about why I think um, she couldn't, and maybe in a future video when I talk about everything that I have personally done, and why I I trust everything that she had done also. Um, but. My liaison officer had gone to the local civil registry, LCR, of Pampanga, and just to search for a record of, um, any type of record of my birth mother, okay? And then, um, then she also needed to requ request a record of local civil registry of, and I'm going to slaughter the city's name, is it Sur 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 I think. Um, S O R S O G O N. Um, so that's the birthplace of my birth mother. And so she was, I guess, in communication or having gone and visited either places, Pampanga or and um, Sosogun. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly or not, but anyway. Um, she couldn't get any information about my birth mother and either, um, from either agency. So then I received an email. The next step was then to get, um, at least something from the National Archives. Um, according to her, she said, suggested to get, um, a no record from the National Archives. Okay. So in April, I had to write a letter to the National Archives for consideration. 
and then um, I guess within that because I still needed my biological mother's birth certificate okay so it was May 2024 uh, the National Archives of the Philippines I think that was the where it was officially submitted to request a certificate of no record and it was through um, my liaison officer uh, submitted a letter and an application to the National Archives of the Philippines. Okay, uh, so by, and then in June, there was also an additional request to the Department of Justice. <sighs> so I did receive in the same month of June it was June 26, 2024, where I received the email from my liaison officer. And um, I'm just going to read what was sent to me. With all of our efforts in getting a no record document for your mother, um, we have nothing from the LRC or LCR of Angeles, PSA Pampanga, and National Archives of the Philippines in Manila because all of them are asking for your biological mother's information which we cannot provide. Our officer told me that they advised him to let you know that if the DOJ has no way to support your application, you need to apply for another visa that is suitable for you. So even though um, Rika was just so um, encouraging, saying she would still continue um, if I wanted to pursue that, to move forward with um, the Department of Justice as the next step, um, that she would do it. And I believe she would have done it. But uh, after reading the email on June 26, 2024, I just thanked her for all of her efforts and I appreciated everything that she had done um, because it was more than anything that I could have done on my own. And um, I just told her to go ahead and start the 13G visa process. And um, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> I know that I'm saying it through tears, but I really am fine with it. I really am. I really am. Um, this is just the first time. Oh man, I should have had tissues. <laughs> it was the, this is just the first time I'm saying anything. Um, since June. Anyway, so Okay, I'm sticking with this video. <laughs> um, and I really don't know what more to say in regards to that. I cannot become a dual citizen. I don't care how many videos I watch. And they keep saying how you can become a dual citizen. And I can't. But, and I don't understand why um, my birth certificate did not have my birth mother's, um, birth date, but maybe I'll, I'll do my own investigating, um, or not, <laughs> or not, but anyway, I know that my next video is going to be talking about getting a barangay certificate, and, um, feeling even more settled in the Philippines, I think that's what makes me feel more comfortable about the entire process is because we now are living in just a very loving community. We have wonderful neighbors. Um, we, we adore our landlord, our landlords. <laughs> Um, 
and we're just very pleased with our decision to do everything we can to become permanent residents in the Philippines. I hate being away from my family and friends. Um, however, this has been a lifelong dream since I was 13 years old to come back to the Philippines. So having left at uh, two and a half, close to three years old, and then to um, finish being here in the Philippines, just, um, it honestly makes me feel more complete and um, happier. And it's really difficult for me to explain that to my family and friends, how and why. And maybe if I can get it together, I might have a video talking about it. But for now, I cannot. <laughs> so thanks for joining me for this video and uh, hanging out with me. I'll catch you later. Bye.